Howdy. So, starting off, uh, that's me, uh, back when I had a giant beard. Uh, you would notice the, the name of this is Beardly. Um, this is back in uh, Singapore a while ago. So, I decided I wanted to do some more stuff with uh, Q Graphics Effects. Um, if you remember before, I did this whole thing where she was showing like a pixelation of an image. Um, and that's just fun. Um, but as far as how you do that with like a Q image, it's actually very simple because Q image in and of itself has some some uh, straightforward methods to, to do some of those things. So I decided I was going to delve a little bit deeper. Not too crazy, but delve a little bit more in and see what it takes to manipulate um, the actual different color spectrums. Like, you know, ripping out um, any of the red, green, or blue, and just sort of doing a little bit of messing around with doing some grayscale stuff, just to show how you would actually go about d manipulating things. Um, now, this is one of those things you don't always sort of run into. Um, I've not run into that often, but it's fun to have this sort of background knowledge. If you, you know, but like I said, you could use it for a cute graphics effect, or you could just use it with a cute image in general if you want to do some sort of image manipulation. Um, this, like I said, it's very straightforward, but you can obviously see where you can extrapolate out from that. So I'm going to show some of the, the end results and then sure to show you how I got to those. Um, so today I'm going to show a little bit more of the, the actual code side that I normally delve into. But like I said, this is Beardly. Um, this is a, my sort of starting out image. And then I just did a, a, a straight output as a PNG. Um, it's pretty much the exact same thing. Um, there is no real difference here, uh, but I just wanted to show what happens if you just slide it straight across the process of inputting into a Q image, Q image and then saving it back out. Here we have just the red channel. So whatever the this image baseline is, we take the green and the blue and we just make them zero. So then we have our, our levels of red. Then with green, we do the exact same thing, obviously turning off red and blue. And then finally with blue, um, which is really awkward to look at, um, more so than I feel red or green is, but with the blue, um, you just rip out the red and green. Very straightforward. Okay, now, and I'll sort of show you code-wise, you literally, um, whenever you load in a Q image, you can sort of start it out as a base format. I'm just using a non-alpha um, RGB. And then I just load in a file. Um, this is just pointing directly to a file that I have on disk, um, which is uh, Beardly. And then I just start grabbing, um, uh, this actually, I don't need, that was something I was coding around with before. I really just need the, the image stuff up here. So where I load the image in, and then I can start going across the entire image. So this image has a size, like a height and a width, and I can go over the X and Y of both of those to find my current pixel. I just sort of take those pixels and throw that into a Q color so that I have my current color that I'm working with. And now for R, G, and B, I'm literally just setting for red, set blue, zero, set green, zero. And then I'm resetting into this base image um, with a set pixel command. Very straightforward. And it just loops over every pixel of the entire image. Just think of it as a big um, loop, which is literally all it is. Loops over all the image, anything that has um, green and blue, it gets zeroed out. Um, and that's really all it is. There's no checking to make sure. I guess you theoretically could check to see what green or blue was to begin with, but because I'm zeroing it out, it doesn't really matter to me what they are. So it just sort of gives me a chance to sort of just rip it out and keep going. And like I said, it's the exact same across all three of them. Um, so then on top of that, I decided that's pretty cool. I wanted to see how the RGB stuff worked, but I wanted to figure out how to do a grayscale image as well. Um, and I just wanted to figure out what the math was behind it because I'm a nerd and I like that sort of stuff. Um, so I started looking into grayscale. Um, if you don't know what grayscale is, this is a grayscale. Uh, this is a grayscale as well. If you're colorblind, then this whole thing has been in grayscale, possibly, depending on the type of colorblind that you are. Um, and in here, they go through all this stuff where they're talking about how you can rip apart color channels and all those different things. But essentially, all you have to realize with grayscale is your RGB of each channel is going to be the exact same. Okay, so um, red, green, and blue are all going to equal like 0.5. Um, but the problem is figuring out how to turn 
this image that looks like me sitting there with at a, looking at a beer with some friends, friends obviously not visible, and turning it into something that's grayscale and still keeping sort of the fidelity of the image. Um, you know, because you still have your lights, you still have your darks, um, but how does that happen? So, thanks to the powers of Google searching, um, I ran across three algorithms for converting to grayscale. Um, really cool article. I'm going to link to it um, in the comments for this, or well, not in the comments, in the description. Sorry. Um, this guy from what, five years ago wrote this article about how GIMP does its um, RGB to grayscale conversions. <clears throat> and it's all wickedly straightforward. Um, you know, and he, he's sort of showing here is a um, comparison of the original image to, you know, lightness, average, and luminosity, these three different algorithms, and they're really, really straightforward. Um, I pretty much just took what he had written here, plugged it into something else, or plugged it into the code, and ran it through. And that's all I'll show you now. So, like, with lightness, you're really just taking the max value of RGB plus the min value of RGB. So when you do max or min there, you end up giving multiple um, values, and it figures out what is the highest and then what is the lowest. So you take the highest of RGB plus the lowest of RGB divided by 2. That's how lightness is calculated according to this guy's algorithms. Average, basic you know, math, and then luminosity um, is 0.21 on R, 0.71 on G, and 0.07 on B. Now, when I first saw this, I was a little bit like, huh? But then I realized, oh, okay, they just mean take all this to calculate your base gray value, then create a color that's gray, gray, gray. Okay? Because, again, you have to remember that R, G, and B are going to be equal. Um, it's just figuring out what R, G, and B should be. Because, essentially, you're just trying to figure out a white to black color. Um, and that's what these different algorithms come in so that when I'm done, so this is my example for lightness, this is for average, <clears throat> and this is for luminosity. Um, you get, like, if you notice some of the, <laughs> I think it's ridiculous, I'm just going to point this out, I actually, with my hand, pointed at part of the image as opposed to with the mouse, like I'm talking to people. Um, if you notice around here, you get some different, um, sort of like a haloing effect. So you get the the reflection of it, but then there's parts of it that's sort of like getting blended out depending on the, the algorithm. Um, and again, how much you want or don't want of that, uh, who am I to decide? Um, it's your own thing. And maybe you can find other algorithms, but I thought this was sort of a cool way to just sort of quickly, um, oh yeah, so that's the, the red halo that we're getting from a light. And some of it is or isn't there. Uh, <clears throat> but my thought is just more that it's really interesting to sort of see how this all sort of comes together. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, um, in, in file, um, I have all this sort of, sort of going and I'm, I'm pushing it back. I'm just running the, the thing multiple times. I'm going to change the names so that I had like a one through, um, through seven so I could understand what's going on. Um, and yeah, that's about it. It's very straightforward to do some of this simple image manipulation. And like, you know, you can always find more complicated um, algorithms. You could do things where you're doing sort of mathematical color shifts based off like, let's say, a sine wave or like above, below a certain, like a slope of a curve. Or, well, I mean, whatever you want to do, you can do it because you have complete control over every pixel of this image. Um, you can do warp effects into it. Um, you can do all sorts of things. Um, it's just however you decide to do those things. Um, and obviously the more complicated, um, the longer it's going to take. Um, so with some of these things, if you look, if I run this, it takes, it all runs within the same minute. So it takes a matter of seconds, but more complicated, um, the more intense you're going to get an, of an image. I mean, the, the more, in, more complicated, the, the longer it's going to take. The, the file size and all that sort of stuff is going to be the exact same. It's just how long it takes to process. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Oh, and if you're doing this, make sure you have a cute application. Um, it seems ridiculous because you're not actually visualizing anything, but if you don't, um, Qt, at least with PySide, does not properly bring information in and then push it back out. You just get weird gray images. 
and it took me a while to figure out what was going on because it doesn't break. Like QPix map won't even let you load without a Q application, but Q image will. Um, and it's just one of those things where I was just doing some test code and I'd never tried it without an application. Um, and I found out why you should never do that. So just a little bit of word for the wise. Um, have a wonderful day. And uh, hopefully this uh, helps other people because I haven't seen a lot of this sort of stuff on like a simplistic level just to sort of show you the ground groundings. So um, have a wonderful day. And uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs>